We were just talking there with our colleague in Hong Kong about the impacts of the curbs on Huawei on Samsung and the different impacts benefiting but also some challenges for that company as well. The, 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 the surprise for many in the G20 conversations between Trump and Xi was this offer by Trump to ease some of the curbs around Huawei. What are the practical implications of that, do you think? Does it, does it lead to a sea change or have investment decisions already been baked in around curbs being put in place? Um, my take is, I think this is a more like a symbolic gesture than anything else, because if you read the fine print, it looks like President Trump put a lot of caveat for this, uh, you know, temporary relief. So I think it's more like, more like a symbolic uh, gesture. Mm. And a key question, of course, is to what extent the indigenous indigenous development of chips and semiconductors here in China can make up for any shortfall if curbs continue to be put in place. And, and your view is that it depends where you're looking in terms of the ecosystem in this sector. Uh, correct. I think uh, we have to look at the short-term impact and the longer-term impact. The interesting uh, result, what I see is um, previously, a uh, lot of startups like chip makers in China, usually the door are not very open for them. Uh, for example, like a big company like a Huawei, a ZTE, and a lot of uh, like industrial and um, equipment maker, they are actually like using and um, the foreign chip. And now suddenly, and then they're all in a pretty nervous mode. And they say, oh, I need a backup plan. And then they actually suddenly open up the doors to a lot of startup companies. Mm. So this is really a, a very good news for the startup company and also for the VCs like us. I think this may be one of the unexpected consequences for this trade war. Mm. And you've talked about it being a marathon in terms of China's ability to catch up particularly in the semiconductors for things like core networks. But you've also said that in some areas like design houses, China is starting to match what we're seeing out of the US. Is that an opportunity then for investors? Where are you looking exactly? Do you look at, do you avoid the foundries and look at the design houses? What are you seeing in terms of how you, how you focus on these investment opportunities? And for us, since our fund is not that big, so we are um, purposely ignore and the, uh, like foundries and the, some equipment makers and in that area. We're pretty much focused on right now on the design houses because they're, they don't need the, a lot and uh, you know capital and uh, expenditures for example however we do expand our portfolio and upstream looking into the material side and the downstream into a lot of like a module and application side and then by doing that they can effectively resolve a dilemma issues which is where you focus and versus where your weak is so by doing that we seem to have enough good focus on the chip design side. At the same time, we have enough weeds and then so can expand our portfolio. Mm. How much support, to what degree has the support from the government been stepped up in light of the restrictions on Huawei to some of these domestic chip makers? Has it started to come through now, that support? Yes, it definitely. And then we see a lot of an, uh, interest and, uh, in the semiconductor side and, uh, and also a lot of capital and uh, pour into this area. And we don't know how long this is going to be. As we mentioned, that this is a marathon, not like a short sprinter. So we need to continue support financially. So don't know how long this is going to last. But I, for the short term, I think it's an overheated area. Mm. So in terms of valuations in the semiconductor space, you think it's getting a little bit frothy now? And for the startup, for like the startup. Uh, for startups, I see the valuation and uh, it's uh, quite high and uh, quite a lot of, lots of them unreasonably high. Mm. Just looking further down the line, whether it's five years out or ten years out, is it safe to assume that U.S. companies like Calcom and Micron, whatever happens on the trade front, will inevitably see their market share in China decline? Uh, not necessarily. And then um, what I see is that uh, the first, um, you know, the startups and uh, chip makers in China, the first area is in the consumer electronics. And then we see a lot of foreign companies actually 
um, pretty much started withdraw from there. So the next layer is industrial, and then the next one is an automobile. And then, you know, given China's and uh, semiconductor and the company are making lots of progress, and then we start to see them, uh, particularly due to this uh, uh, trade war, started moving from purely uh, consumer electronics domain it, it's already into industrial domain. And some of them actually move into the automobile domain. Like one of our portfolio companies are doing really well into the, uh, the automobile domain. Mm. Mm. So opportunities in the automobile domain. And you're saying as well that 5G is proving something of a catalyst as well in terms of developing some of the parts of the sector and the industry here. Just walk us through what kind of opportunity you see there. I think one of the key things for 5G is the coverage. Mm. And then 5G coverage is much shorter in distance wise and the cell radius is much smaller. So then you need a lot more cells to cover the same area as compared to 4G, for example. And because of that, we see a lot of a demand for the electronics, like, like chips, and also a lot of demand for the backhaul connection and to the central office. This is actually stimulate for optical fiber and the communication, a lot of fiber com components, a good opportunity. I think a market window is there. Mm. We are very bullish on, uh, on uh, this sector. Mm, interesting, okay, how is your portfolio performing? Are you looking at getting some exits in 2019, the second half of the year? Um, you know, we're primarily on startup companies and our portfolio right now uh, looks very healthy. Uh, we cover into, as mentioned, uh, um, like automobile already. We see like a radar module and uh, we invest in milli millimeter waves and the chips and also LiDAR chips and, uh, you know, like automobile central control chips and also AI chips and also some application and area. We're quite happy with our portfolio currently.